Howdy everyone! For today's Jolly Lark, I'm going to show you how I speed painted my Sylvaneth army. 2,000 points in just about two weeks to get it ready for a local grand tournament, which I then went on to even take home the best painted trophy for. So, to kick things off, I gave all my Sylvaneth models a primer coat of kind of a medium brown. I used the Badger Stylin Res airbrush primer, but you could just as easily prime the model black and then paint it some sort of medium brown or umber color. Um, and then on top of that, I put on a generous, you can see I'm, I'm using a big old fat brush and really slopping this wash on here. I uh, gave it a generous wash of purple. Um, I'm using the Citadel shade purple, uh, but you just as easily could use Army Painter or another purple shade. Purple is a nice shade color for brown and the purple tones in the brown wood will also contrast nicely with the bright green that we're going to add later. The Sylvaneth have a lot of texture and do really well with washes and dry brushing. Once that purple wash is fully, fully dry, it's time to add some of the green glow. Um, and to do that, what you want to do, the green glow is not going to have much, not going to do much on top of the brown. So what we're going to do is paint all of the glowing areas with a nice bright white first. I'm using Pro Acryl Bright Ivory, which is the white adjacent color that I've used that does the best job of covering up darker colors in, in one quick coat. Uh, Pro Acryl's Bold Titanium is also great, but the Bright Ivory just has a little bit better coverage. So for all the Sylvaneth, and th so throughout this video, let's back up a second. Throughout this video, I'm gonna show some techniques on a small model like the Dryad, and then I'm also gonna show the same techniques on a larger model like the Lady of Vines. Um, so for the glow effect, what I'm doing here first is just choosing which areas I want to be glowing. Um, and that's painting them a solid white. And then once the areas that are solid white are painted, kind of wiping the rest of the paint off the brush and dry brushing around the edges of the glowy area. So once you've got some solid white areas on the face, on the tips of the claws is what I'm doing for the dryads here, you're then just gonna wipe the paint off your brush and do a quick dry brush of the same white to kind of feather the solid white areas back into the brown color. So you're gonna end up with something, some solid white tips on the claws with just a, a rough, very rough blend, kind of dry brush blend of the solid white back into the, the brown bark, like so. You're gonna want the white to be fully dry before you move on to the next step and start adding some green. Um, but if you're painting a whole bunch of them at the same time, the dry brushing dries quickly. So this green step is super fast. We're just grabbing some of the Tesseract Glow and painting it all over the solid white, all over the dry brushed area, and covering some part of the brown bark that's behind the dry brushed area. Pulling some of the green on to the brown areas um, that don't have any white on them at all will help the green to look like it's shining from the brightest area, which is the area that you painted solid white, and fading as it goes back into the rest of the miniature. Now, of course, if you've got an airbrush, spraying some white on the miniature on the areas that you want to be glowing will be really, really easy. This is a great use, a great beginner use of the airbrush uh, where you don't have to be too precise. You want the white color that you're spraying to kind of fade into the areas around it. Like you almost want the overspray that you're sometimes trying to avoid when airbrushing. So with this Lady of Vines, it's exactly the same idea. I want her face, I want the tips of her weapons, I want the tips of her tendrils to all be bright white. I want those bright white areas to fade into the brown bark. Um, and then I'm gonna paint green all over all of the white areas, plus a little, paint the green a little bit beyond. Otherwise, it started out exactly the same. Brown base coat, purple wash, whether or not you wanna use an airbrush or you wanna use a dry brush to get that white faded white glowing look, that's up to you. I'm being pretty generous with the green wash here. I'm definitely letting it flow and settle into the recessed areas. Um, you know, this is not a, a thin coat. This is definitely a thicker coat, enough that it is puddling and pooling just a little bit. So as you're doing this, you can see I've got a whole bunch of dryads all with the same white glowy bits in the background. And I'm just going to bust this out on the entire army, put that, putting that green glow over every single miniature character or troops all at the same time. 
One of the beauties of batch painting a lot of models all at the same time is that every step is dry before you move on to the next step. So as long as you've got the time to paint, you're never having to wait for the next step to dry. You don't have to muck around with, with blow dryers or anything like that. So once you've got all your green, your glow dry, the next step is to give them a dry brush of kind of a, a medium warm gray. In this instance, I'm using the P3 Paint Crix Bane Highlight, um, but there's some grays in the Citadel range would work. I think the warm neutral gray um, from Pro Acryl would work fine. And with a big fat dry brush, I'm not trying to get into all the cracks and crevices. I'm giving the whole miniature a coat of this on all the areas that are not covered with, and that did not have any white on them. But I am taking this gray and dry brushing the areas of the miniature that had green but no white. So if you remember in the previous step, what we did is we took that green wash, we put it on all the white areas, and then spread it a little bit into some of the areas of the brown purple that didn't have any white. And so this dry brush is gonna overlap with that area. So you're gonna have an area in between the white that has both a green wash and a gray highlight. You can see that a little bit better here on the Lady of Vines where you're getting some of that dry brushing of the gray is kind of intersecting with the green area. So just one more time as I'm doing the Lady of Vines here, and it is easier to see on the bigger model, you're kind of looking for the white to fade into the brown and then the green to cover the white and fade in further into the brown. And then the gray dry brush is covering all of the brown purple areas and then dry brushing that into the green area a little bit too. And, and what that'll create is the effect of having a glow at the end of the branches and that glow spilling over a little bit into the non-glowing areas. Now, this is such a fast and easy technique and really produces a, a nice subtle transition from the brightest areas to the darker wood areas, doing nothing more than dry brushing and washing. Uh, like I said earlier, if you have the airbrush to do the white, that's fine, but it's really not necessary. Don't, don't feel like you can't try this technique if you don't have an airbrush at home. Because the other thing that's nice about doing the Sylvaneth, or, or really a lot of non-human, if it's the dry brushing is a little rough, it just looks like bark texture. Painting these models, I almost felt like I was, you know, cheating. It's a real delight to knock out thousands of points of models in just a couple of weeks. So to make the glow a little glowier, we're going to take a nice bright white. The P3 white is what I happened to grab first, but really any white is appropriate for this. And with a small junky brush, just adding a little bit of white to the faces just to give the faces that extra little pop of glow. Whenever you're doing glow effects, you generally want the glowing object to be the brightest thing. And this kind of achieves that just to, to make the really draw attention to the face. And if you wanna put a little bit on the tips of some of the forward facing claws, that's cool. And uh, we'll do that a little bit more in some of the bigger models too. So switching to a bigger model, uh, back to our Lady of Vines bigger model example here. Same junky white brush, same white paint, and really, like I said, any white paint will do. And you're just doing a light dry brush, which means putting a little bit of paint on the brush, wiping the brush off on the paper towel, and then just kind of gently stroking the raised areas of the miniature that you want that white paint to be deposited on. And you can see this step with the extra white really helps sell the glow, and you we're kind of all, this is all about transitions. It's all about transitions from glow to wood to glowing wood. And you don't want to put the white all over the green area. You want to put, I need to maybe put some white on 50% of the areas that were white to start with. So, you know, just a little bit on shoulders. And the more that you put on the model's faces, the more attention will be drawn to the face which, you know, is usually a good thing. That usually want the face to be the focal point of the model. So I'm putting quite a lot more white on her face than anywhere else, but putting a little bit of white dry brushed onto the edges of the other glowy green areas. Her kind of magic heart in the center or the shoulder pads will do a little bit of white on the tips of the vines and tendrils, but, but don't go overboard. You still want these to read to the eye as green more than white. 
Once you've got the white brightened up on all your miniatures in your army, it's time to do one more highlight pass on the wood portions of the models. So another big fat dry brush. Um, this time I'm using the Pro Acryl Ivory, uh, something like a bleached bone or any sort of off-white is a good highlight color for the wood. So the wood's going from brown to purple wash to warm gray to a, a light ivory uh, dry brush. Now, depending on what part of the world you are, trees might be a different color, but around here on the East Coast of the United States, you definitely get kind of that brown with gray with white highlights look to a lot of the trees and the forests around here. Um, this is not all over. You can see I'm going to speed up the time a little bit. I'm just putting a little, a little bit of highlights on some of the, the raised areas, knees and shoulders, um, some of the spines going up the back. This is super fast. I'm spending seconds doing this on each model. And when you're trying to batch paint an entire army all at one time, going fast sometimes matters a little bit more than, than being precise. I had a tournament that I was getting ready for with this army, so I knew I wanted to get the whole thing done quickly. Um, and as you can see on screen, I'll just put in a brief plug for the Jolly Lark painting handles, which are a huge help when batch painting models. The Kickstarter for those was a big success in the fall, and I look forward to having those available for sale come the new year. And uh, you actually can still pre-order now. I'll put the pre-order link down below, but super handy. With the bulk of the painting done, it's time to get into some of the little details. Uh, for this, I'm grabbing a green, Dark Angel's Green Contrast from Citadel, and I'm just gonna pop a little bit of green onto some of the leaves here. And one of the things that's neat about this is that in the process of dry brushing the wood bits with the gray and the ivory color, essentially you've pre-highlighted all of these leaves so just a little thin coat of contrast is probably all you need. And you could put on an orange here or even a yellow, uh, a light green or a darker green, a brown, whatever color you want the leaves to be. So for example, to make the Kurnoth Hunters stand out a little bit more, I painted their leaves with the, a kind of a dark flesh tone. I think it's dark oath flesh to give them kind of a pale orange leaves. For the next step, we're gonna add a little bit of detail to the faces by dropping just a thin brush full of the Citadel Technical Hex Wraith Flame into the eye sockets and the mouths. The faces are already nice and bright, but you still want those, even on a you know spirity dryad forest creature here, you still want the mouth and the eyes to stand out as notable features. Um, this is a quick wash. The Hex Wraith Flame is a bright, bright, kind of medium transparent green. And, you know, because it's supposed to be kind of glowy, it's okay if it gets a little bit outside the socket or a little bit outside the mouth, but I'm just dabbing it onto the sockets, dabbing it into the mouth and letting the previous dry brushing steps provide the highlighting of the eyes within the eye socket. So, you know, just, just a couple seconds on each model, boom, 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 eye, eye, mouth, that's it. So I'm gonna change gears for just a second and uh, go backwards in time a little bit and show you how I did some of the bladed weapons that appear on um, some of the Revenants, some of the Kurnoth, some of the characters have this style kind of bladed edge weapon. And I, I didn't wanna do any metallics or, or silver because it didn't feel like that fit in with the theme. Um, so what I'm doing is in the step where I've gotten some dry brushed or airbrushed white on the glowy bits of the model, I, I went ahead and airbrushed, dry brushed the weapon pretty fully white. And then as, as it almost as bright as the face and then had that fade a little bit into the handle of the weapon. And then I'm giving the entire weapon a nice solid coat of warp lightning green, which is one of the Citadel contrast paints. And then after that, once that dries, I'm gonna go in with a combination of the Pro Acryl transparent white, um, which is basically a white that just doesn't cover very well. It's re reasonably thin and a nice bright solid white. You could use Pro Acryls for white. You could use, I like the P3 white is good too. And with this, taking some cues from the style of painting non-metallic metal, I'm just gonna paint some highlights of white and then use the transparent white to fade them in into the green. So I'm gonna paint a solid white line in a few different places where that blade might catch the light on kind of the brightest highlights. Kind of paint in on 
the middle of some of the curves along some of the raised portions and then use the transparent white to kind of cheat to blend those bright white lines into the green. There's lots of great non-metallic metal tutorials out there if you really want to get into it. And that's not really what I'm trying to do uh, here, but just kind of trying to have the same general effect. And how I usually go about picking the spots that are going to get the brightest white highlights is I'll start with the middle of the biggest curve, like I did on the top of the weapon here. And then I'll go to the next curve that's kind of on that side, put another highlight there, and then add the highlight in the middle of the opposite edge. And so you can kind of see on the top of this blade here that one side of the blade has a few highlights and then the other side of the blade, the highlights are on the other side in between the first ones. Now, deciding where to put those white highlight lines on kind of the big flat faces, that's the part that takes a little bit of practice. And then after that, it's pretty easy. I'm just going to go through and put a thin white edge highlight on all the edges. So that's kind of the sh what would be the sharp edges of the blade on inside and out, and that top edge that connect where the two faces of the blade meet each other, and a couple on the little, I don't know, squiggly, squirrely bits at the base of the blade. So then with the, uh, the bright white highlights placed, it's time to go back in with a little bit of transparent white. And as you can see on my thumbnail there, it's pretty thin. This, you, not would, you would not use this to paint a white cloth, but it's terrific for something like this. And you know when you put transparent white on top of bright white, nothing happens because you're just putting your scene through the transparent white and seeing the white underneath, right? But when you can paint kind of a broad stroke of transparent white, on top of those bright white highlights, the net effect you have is feathering the edges where the transparent white is spilling out over the size of the bright white highlight. So as you can see what I'm doing here is just kind of going over those bright white lines I painted on with kind of fatter strokes of the transparent white. It, you know, you're putting it on really thin, it dries really fast, you can kind of do one, do another, do the third one, then go back to the first one, and you're just going it over with a few different strokes of transparent white. Um, you want to put, you know, maybe four or five strokes of transparent white on each bright white highlight, varying the size so that as you're coming out from the bright white highlight that you started with, as you kind of go out from that, you're having less and less transparent white, effectively creating a fade from the bright white to the darker green. like, And it's easiest to see on that big wide facet of the blade that has the brightest highlight, but it's basically the same idea all over the weapon. You could do just a couple coats of the transparent white, you can do more smaller ones, whatever you feel comfortable with. Just keep working at that until you're happy with the transitions from the bright white to the green, until you end up kind of with something like this. And uh, once you hit a point where you're happy with it, we'll move on to the next step. So here, I just wanted to show you a Kurnoth Hunter's blade, exactly the same idea. Bright white on the parts, on the edges, um, on the curve, the big curves of the blades, feathering out those bright white highlights with some transparent white, different shaped weapon, exactly the same idea. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this on all the bladed weapons in the army. Now, to finish off the bladed weapons, once the white is fully dry, all I'm going to do is go back to the same pot of Hexwraith Flame that we used earlier and put a thin layer of that, not so much that it's puddling or pooling, but just enough to tint all the white highlights, um, a, a, you know, kind of a nice bright green, and that Hexwraith Flame is a very bright green. Uh, so just a real thin layer of that all over will blend the whites into the greens and give the whole weapon kind of a nice glowy... Um, kind of green energy effect. Uh, bigger weapons, same deal. Just a real a thin coat, not letting it puddle and pool all over the weapon of the Hex Wraith Flame. Uh, and just a note on the transparent white, um, if that's not a pot of paint you have in your collection, um, there are you alternately can get a zinc white from your local arts and crafts store. Zinc white doesn't cover as well as titanium white, and a, a zinc white can essentially be used the same way. Um, you can also take the regular white paint you've got and mix it with a little bit of contrast medium, 
um, or artist medium water doesn't work as well because you can get some of that what's called coffee staining kind of the lines at the edges of where you've put it on nice and thin um, but if you don't have a, a pot of transparent white you can essentially make your own transparent white by mixing in some medium come clear medium into your white paints or by picking up some zinc white um, i like the golden brand at a local artist store now, as a final step on these bladed weapons, once that a wash of green has dried, I'm gonna put one more really slight bright white highlight just kind of on the leading edges of the weapons to kind of sharpen them up a little bit to make sure that those most obvious forward leading edges are as bright as possible. And it may put a little shine on the most prominent details. This isn't all over. There's a lot fewer little bright white highlights than we did in the first step, but just brightening up what are already the brightest spots, just a little bit more to make sure that it's fully got as bright a glow as possible. So I wanted to jump to another bigger model here where I think you can really see the differences between some of the styles of green. I knew with this army I basically wanted to have a couple different colors of green mixed in with the the grayish browns of the bark so on this tree lord here and this is the step i recorded where i was putting a little bit of a white highlight on his face but with the tree lord here you can see the glowy bright green areas um, that are created with the tesseract glow kind of in contrast with the green bladed weapons that we did in the last step and so even though they're both green they read pretty differently on the table so some of the characters, the Kurnoth, the Tree Lords, have some little shelf fungi, some little mushrooms growing off of their bark. Uh, and for those, all I did is hit those with a quick coat of Citadel Contrast Griff Charger Gray. Um, it settles into the middle nicely and provides a kind of a blue-gray tone to the cap of the mushrooms while leaving the rim of the mushroom a brighter white. Um, just one once and done. Um, if you want the mushrooms to be a little brighter, you can hit them with a little coat of ivory paint beforehand, like I've done here, uh, or you can just depend on the dry brushing you did earlier to highlight the mushrooms and pop on a little bit of a, a Griff Charger Gray to make these kind of blueberry mushrooms like I have here. I didn't want the mushrooms to draw too much attention, but I did want them to be a little different. But if you were a, a really pro mushroom, you could do these you know, as red cap mushrooms or bright yellow chicken of the woods style mushrooms or something like that, which could be fun too. But whatever suits your fancy, mushrooms come in, in every color of the rainbow. Uh, so I'm doing a blue gray here, but whatever floats your boat mushroom wise. So when doing these painting videos, I always struggle a little bit of to know how much to talk about the basing. Um, people always have their own ideas for basing. Um, I like doing separate basing videos. I've done a few of those so far. Um, but when talking about how I did a certain style of miniature or army, um, you know, basing, you could go this way, you could go that way. You might want to do a similar style of basing to what I've done with this army. Maybe not. Um, so I think in general, I'd be curious to hear what you think, what you all think of this. Uh, let me know in the comments of largely separating basing videos as separate videos because you might want to use this style of base on some other army you might want to use some other style of base on this army so with that in mind i'll put a link down below to how i did the mossy forest floor covered bases that i used throughout this army um, i released that as a separate video earlier and we'll stick to just the miniatures in this video so in the course of dry brushing the miniatures you're going to have put some dry brushed ivy all over um, but i really want the skulls to stand out and kind of highlight some of the spookiness of the sylvaneth models so i'm going to go back in and paint all the skulls with the pro acryl ivory um, just to give them a nice solid base coat to work with um, and not just rely on the earlier dry brushing to give the skulls a little bit of a weathered aged sitting out in the rain sort of look i'm mixing up some citadel contrast black templar uh, with some contrast medium to create a black that's not quite so intense and then I'm going to apply that as a wash all over the skulls and then just make a point of kind of wiping the wash a little bit off the top of the skulls so you don't end up with like a black bleh, blob on on the top of each skull you want the black to fall into the, the eye sockets and the nose and around the edges not to sit right on top of the forehead 
So to uh, increase the spook on the skulls, I'm just gonna grab a little bit more of the Tesseract green and just drop a tiny little bit of the Tesseract green into each eye socket. Um, it's a reasonably transparent color, but it's still opaque enough if it's puddled up just a tiny bit, you'll be able to see a tiny little green glow in the eye of every skull. And that is it. It's time to paint the edges of the bases and call this a finished army. And man, like I said at the beginning of the video, I just kind of couldn't believe how fast this painted up. Not counting the bug riders that I spent a little bit more time on, I painted up about 2,000 points of Sylvaneth in probably 20-ish hours. Uh, really fast and easy, did the entire army all at one time, had a good time doing it, had a good time playing with it. Just a, a really fun project all around. Hopefully you got some good ideas that you can use for your Sylvaneth army. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out the links below and we'll see you on the next Jolly Lark.